Okay, welcome back. I said we were going to start on iPods, and we will, but I realized I forgot to show you something else that I wanted to show you, and that is how to take music from a CD and copy it to your computer. And the CD I picked out, I just now realize, is totally jacked up, so I'm going to have to go find another one. I will be right back. Okay, no time passed for you, which is the magic of the pause button. Um, I have a CD here, it's by Fig Dish, which, you know, I don't really, I'm not really into this band. I bought the CD used on Amazon for one track, because I heard it in a movie and I liked it. So... This is actually kind of a perfect example of what iTunes is good for because sometimes you can find a really good deal like 99 cents for a CD. Yeah, it's kind of an obscure track that you can't find to download or buy on the internet. Le legally download or buy on the internet. So you might end up with like a used CD, cheap CD, but you only like one or two tracks on it so you don't necessarily want to listen to the whole CD. And if you convert it to digital format, you can put it either on a disc with other songs or, hmm, my disc drive is being a bitch. Or you can just put it into your digital collection and you won't have to listen or just like listen to the whole CD or pull out the whole CD just for one song. So I'm going to pop this CD into my disk drive wait for it to load ooh it's processing here we go would you like to import the CD that's what love songs often do into your library I'm going to click no on this one. You could just click yes and it'll totally import it. I'm going to click no because I only want this one song. So I'm going to create AAC version here. Oh, let's see. Okay. And AAC, once again, is the format that they use to... Uh, it's basically the audio format. It's like an MP3, but it's specifically for this program. And you see it's importing Chew Toy, which is the only song I really wanted from the CD. It's got a little orange dot with a wavy line. That means it's importing it. And if I was going to do multiple ones, it would only show up next to the one that was currently being imported. Here in the sidebar, you see Devices has popped up and CD. And you see that's the title of the disc and it's doing something, in this case it's importing. You can see because it's got the little arrows and they're chasing each other around and whatnot. And then you have this button, this is the eject button, which is going to be important later. It's not so important right now. But that'll eject your CD from the, from the computer, which is kind of cool. But of course you don't really need it to eject the CD. You will need that button to eject your iPod because you an iPod is basically a little computer, and just like when you first learned to use a computer and they taught you you have to shut it down instead of just turning it off. It's kind of like that, but to a lesser degree. So we've got less than a minute on Chew Toy, and it's a little slow to convert a lot of songs at once. I mean, it's not slow, slow, but the reason it takes long is because you want to maintain the quality of the song. You don't want a crappy sounding song. I mean, you want it to sound like it does on the CD, so it, it does take a minute or two to convert a song. Here we have import settings. I clicked on that down at the bottom. Import using, oh, you can use different kinds of encoders. That's really interesting. You could actually do all MP3s. That's cool. And here you can set the quality, you can set it to good quality, which is what most of your downloaded MP3s are. High quality, higher quality, I'm going to set it back to good quality because I don't, 
I mean, if it's good enough, you know. There we go. So in the future, I guess it'll have it'll import it to MP3 instead of AAC. That's kind of cool. We're gonna test it out here in a minute. <coughs> Three, two, one. One. Okay. Oh, it made a little noise when it was done. That's kind of nice. Lemonator. That sounds like a, a good... Oh, here we go. Create MP3 version. So, and I don't, I don't know if it used to do this, but now I guess you can create MP3s from your iTunes, which will allow you to use it in any kind of program, because it's kind of, like I said before, I think I said it before, it's the universal file format. So, uh, when you're going to import you can, like I said, you can go down the import se import settings, and you can change it. Default, it's going to be AAC. You can change it to MP3. I changed it to good quality to make it a little bit faster. Well, we're going to create an MP an MP3 version of this, and MP3s work perfectly fine with iTunes. They'll go on your iPod. It's you know, it's totally fine. How about that? There you go. Making a an MP3. Awesome. So even I learned something during this video. Okay. And as soon as this is finished, which looks like it's going to be finished probably in less than a minute, because I don't think it's been a minute since it started. Um, maybe it'll take a minute. I don't know. I have no concept of time. We are going to plug in my iPod. Actually while doing that I want to show you. iPods are generally connected one of two ways. If you have a Mac, a Macintosh, or an iBook, or you know, which is also a Mac, whatever, you might have this thing called like a Firewire or something. Hang on, let me, let me find this uh, iPod pod shuffle this is the one that I have iPod shuffle there's lots of different kinds of iPods they have screens they don't have screens oh that's not the one I have maybe they made a new one oh it finished yay I'm kind of looking for oh here we go okay um a lot of the iPods now, if you have like a Mac, it may come with FireWire, which is like a Mac-only connection, but a lot of them come with USB connections. And you can see here in the box, it comes with an iPod Shuffle USB cable. If you're not familiar with USB, I mean, it's basically how it's going to connect to your computer, is USB. Universal Serial Bus is what it stands for. Let's see if Wiki has any pictures of it. Here we go. USB plug right here. This is a USB plug. So the end of whatever it comes with is going to look like this. And just about any computer is going to have a USB port on the back. And it should, your iPod should just be plug and play. You should just be able to plug it in if you have XP or Vista on a PC. And it'll register your iPod, and you may have to like name it or whatever. We'll see what happens when I plug mine into this one. But you'll find a slot on the back of the computer that fits this, and it has like a little white dealy on the inside. And your slot will have a white dealy that'll go on the blank side of this plug, so it kind of just locks together, fits together, and you'll just plug it in. 